Welcome aboard. Uh, currently en route to Cutbank, Montana. I thought I would take this opportunity to show you some of the features of the Garmin G500 flight display. Just had this installed in my 310, the 1970 Cessna 310Q. Again, this is the Garmin G500. There's two parts to it. On the left here is the PFD or primary flight display that gives you your attitude, direction, airspeed, altitude. All your uh, replaces all your conventional instruments. And then on this side is the MFD, the multifunction display. So I'll just uh, take you quickly through the features of the PFD. On the top here are the data from your GPS. And uh, I have a Garmin 530W in here, GNS 530W. And the G500 Garmin flight display does require uh, GPS, a GPS to be installed, a Garmin GPS. So, so on the left here is your airspeed tape, and on the stop, on the top is your ground speed. This is in miles per hour. Because of the S, the way the STC works, this airplane when it was built, the airspeed was in both miles an hour and not, so the display has to be in miles per hour. And here's your airspeed tape here. And then on the bottom is your true airspeed, which is 199 miles an hour. Battery 40 Juliet Charlie's 10 miles to the northwest. That down for a minute. And then on the bottom, it tells you that's miles per hour, and we also have our wind vector. So the wind is 279 degrees true at 21 knots. And finally, our outside air temperature, minus 14 C. And the uh, G500 does come with a temperature probe, so you don't reuse your your um, temperature probe from the airplane. So there's your attitude information, your EHSI, your electronic horizontal situation indicator, showing our current heading and showing the course deviation. It's uh, currently uh, on the GPS, but you can switch it with the CDI key here, this hot key, to uh, VLOC, your localizer. This is your vertical speed. Right now it's zero because we're level at 10,500. There is a bug on it, but it uh, on this autopilot, I have a STEC 55X. That does not work. And then finally, the airspeed, uh, sorry, the uh, altitude tape here, so we're at 10,500. Our barometric pressure there, um, our altitude bug up here, and then that's the altitude bug as well. So that moves up and down when you set, moves up and down when you set the uh, altitude. So there's a series of keys here, and each one drives your various bugs. So it defaults to heading, so if I turn the heading, you can see the heading bug there spinning. And if I just want to reset it, I just push here, and boom, it goes back up. And then, for example, if I want to set the altitude, I'd push this altitude button here, and then I could adjust the altitude with the uh, multifunction knob here. Or I could set the uh, barometric pressure, so I'll push that, and you can see there I can change the barometric pressure. multi-function display on this side. Um, it also has a wind uh, vector there, and you can customize these however you like. I've got, that's Great Falls there, that's their Tursa. You can put on Victor Airways here, like you can see there. There's your own ship, and then you can see that there's uh, a bit of basic culture like terrain, uh, rivers, lakes. And uh, I can adjust that. I can push the map button here. And I can turn the topo off by pushing that hot key. I'm flying IFR. Turn it back on. And I can also turn on the terrain display here with that button. So there's four main menus, which you navigate through using the outer knob. So that's the map chapter. The weather, you can see there's a little snow shower there. The aux page, you can set uh, bugs here for glide, V-rotate, VX, VY, change how your wind vector style is. And then finally, um, there's the flight plan page. So let me go back to map, 
there's two pages here on using the on map. Actually, there's three pages using the inner knob. So that's page one. That's page two. And basically, you could just set those up however you like. Um, so this could you could orient this one at a north up if you wanted to. And then finally, there's the terrain page. So I can use the range buttons here to see the terrain. Now on the weather page, again, there's two pages that you can scroll through. This one has METARs. The first one there had the the uh, lightning, NEXRAD, and cell movement. So let's go back to the METAR page. And uh, then this final page just has the general weather fronts, things like that. And again, you can customize these however you like. The AUX page, that was the settings page. Then you have uh, a page here that shows you what products you have. If you have the GDL69 for weather and audio. And then finally, uh, this is just shows your database cycles on that page. And then finally, the flight plan. Uh, that shows you your main flight plan. You can also set your barometric minimums there. And it does enunciate minimums, minimums. And it gives you your uh, in-route safe altitude. And then the second page shows you your destination. We're going to Cutbank, Montana. And you can push uh, the weather hotkey here and see the METARs and TAPs. Or you can push the info button here and look at runway lengths and frequencies. And then finally, there's your uh, government, uh, U.S. government approach plates. And uh, you can zoom in just pushing the range keys here. You can zoom in and you can then use the inner and outer knob to pan left and right, so. And, uh, those are the main features of it. I hope you enjoyed this little video I've made. I'm not gonna profess to understand everything about it. I'm just uh, bringing the airplane back from the avionics shop in Billings where I had it installed. Uh, so I'm still learning the system, but I hope to fly it uh, VFR for five or ten hours and really learn the system, especially how it interfaces with the autopilot. I'll just zoom out and show you uh, kind of an overview of the panel here. So you can see the backup instruments across the bottom here. Those are required. They're required to be in your field of view. And then I have a GNS 530, an STEC 55X autopilot. And then my audio panel, my uh, NAVCOM number two, and transponder. And my engine instruments on the bottom of the center panel there. And then my co-pilot's panel there. So thanks for watching this uh, video. And I hope you enjoyed the video I made here. And I uh, just want to say this system is absolutely spectacular. If you're thinking about it, I highly recommend it.